Uh, all right, is. hey guys, we're on N64 and the screen is squished. Uh, all right, not too big. Uh, Fig, you want to start this out uh, talking about what we're playing on? Sure. So this is a uh, ROM hack of the game. We mentioned it a little bit earlier, but this is the practice ROM. Uh, this is a ROM hack created by Glank that has completely revolutionized how we practice and test things in this game. And uh, it's going to be very helpful in showing off all these glitches and allow us to do it efficiently. And uh, yeah. yeah, so let's get right into it. So this, uh, what, what's really cool about this is it has save states. And this is incredibly good for showing off some glitches. So we can get right into it. So first thing I'm going to do is with Twinrova. So this save state here is Twinrova with very low HP. Twinrova is just about to die. One hit will kill her. And I'm going to... Uh, make sure that the beam is still shooting out of Link's shield when Twinrova dies. So as you see, the, it's lagging a lot, but uh, Twinrova g gets hit as the... Uh, Twinrova dies as the beam is still hitting Twinrova. So that is attempting to stun Twinrova, but Twinrova can't be stunned because she's dead. But uh, when the game... When Twinrova dies, a 10,000 frame timer starts. And this is uh, just to say that Twinrova is invulnerable and nothing can happen. If you wait out those 10,000 frames, which happens to be about eight minutes, um, I'm skipping past those eight minutes with a save state, which is really nice. So if you actually wait, uh, wait it out, some interesting stuff happens. You may have just heard a sound. That was kind of weird. I don't think there's anything in the room. What, what's going on? Something fishy's happening. Eerie, quiet. I don't like it. I hear a sound. Oh no. So, Twinrova's back from the dead. Um, oh no, I didn't set the thing. No. It's okay. Wait, I'll, I'll just do it right now. Uh, <laughs> so, this. Um, so, we're going to use the hitbox viewer here. Yeah. So, this is another really cool um, application of the, hit, of the practice ROM is a hitbox viewer. So, as you can see, Twinrova is over there, but the beam is coming from over here. So, the invisible Twinrova glitch, uh, Twinrova is always going to shoot from where she died, even though the body is moving in other directions. Like, she's right over there. Now, you normally wouldn't see Twinrova. Uh, Alright. Gotta wait for a fire one here. Uh, not that. Um, so, the, what's happening here is after the 10,000 frame timer, uh, that timer runs out, and suddenly Twinrova's allowed to be stunned again. And uh, the game state for Twinrova being stunned uh, just another, another kill here. Oh my just god, I almost crashed. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can repeat this over and over again. So again, I just hit Twinrova, I killed Twinrova as she's, um, as she's dying. And that activates the glitch again. And you can repeat this over and over. So I'm going to skip past the end of the cutscene. Also, she says something very interesting at the end of this cutscene. I'll come back to haunt you. <laughs> exactly. Wasn't lying. I'll come back in 10,000 yeah. frames to haunt you. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you also get multiple heart containers from this. So as you see, getting two heart containers here. And you can repeat this over and over, so you can get even more. So uh, here you can see this is way more than eight, or way more than two, it, it is eight. So I can keep getting. Now, a lot of people ask, what happens when you get more than 20 hearts? Well, this happens. It continues to extend the second row of hearts. So this is 24 hearts. Uh, but you can get even more than this. Like this, uh, you can keep doing it over and over. Uh, so here's what happens if you get 128 hearts. Pretty amazing. Quite a lot. Um, now, there's something interesting with 128 hearts I want to show on the file select screen. So this is what happens when you have this many hearts. Pretty neat. And uh, one last thing is it also spawns a bunch of blue warps. So there's actually like multiple blue warps there, as you can see by the lag. So I'm going to try Ocarina, item. <laughs> Ocarina Items on the edge of the blue warp here. And um, so this will give me control. This is going to take uh, longer than normal uh, because there's so many blue warps. Um, do you remember but, how Link was spinning earlier in Forest Temple? Yeah, yeah. So when, when you go in a blue warp, it spins Link. And each uh, blue warp... Uh, adds a certain spin to Link. So with so many blue warps, uh, there's going to be a lot of spin involved. And I also got this floaty property, and so Link's going to start spinning. <laughs> oh.
All right, on to the next part. So we're going to go to Fire Temple for the next one. So I want to open this chest, but I also want to die at the same time. This is going to cause some interesting stuff. So I'm going to set a bomb down right now and try to do a quick spin and then use Din's Fire. I'm going to use Frame Advance, another feature of this, to try to open the chest on frame two here. And this is going to kill me. So using, using the quick spin and then Din's Fire allows me to do some kind of action out of Din's Fire. Then I try to open the chest, then I die. And now uh, the chest opens. You know, I didn't quite open the chest. So I'm in this weird state where, like, I'm kind of supposed to be opening the chest. And this causes this weird glitch where Link kind of, if I try to do a slide hop or backflip, Link kind of does this weird jump. Uh, it's kind of like ground jump. Um, I, it's pretty much like infinite ground jump. Uh, it's not that interesting alone, though, but... It has an interesting property if I do it when I die. Because I can just keep doing it. Uh, if you're familiar with the zombie hover glitch in Wind Waker, it made its way into OOT. Yeah, so since I'm dead, uh, Link is always walking in air. And I can just keep this up however long I want. Uh, unfortunately, if I... Uh, one potential use we thought of for this was that we could load the room above it. But unfortunately, when you load that room, it deactivates the glitch. Um, but there's another interesting thing we can do with this. So the boss door is right there. Uh, I'm not going to open it. I'm just going to hover over it. And uh, something interesting to note about this glitch is this is actually one of the most recent glitches. This was found, what, like early December? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so this is, this is barely a month old. Uh, very recent. Pretty cool that we get to show off such a recent trick. Yeah, Holly and Freddy found that one. Yeah. And now for the third part. This is where I come in. Yep. Um, just going to open up a laptop up here up front. I uh, can't see it on camera, but part of this, what I'm doing now, is going to require a laptop. So you may be a bit confused. But just bear with me. Oh, yeah, can I have your USB? Yeah. Won't take long here. And we're actually going to switch. That was just on 1.2 version. We're going to switch to 1.0 um, to do the next part. Maybe a good time for a quick donation. Sure thing. We have uh, $50 from The Hell Sage who says, Watching ZFG play Ocarina is a trip. I have never been so excited to be so completely confused by what I'm witnessing. <laughs> Donation goes to ZFG's Choice, which, by the way, is now Animorphs. And we are almost halfway to what we need for that incentive to make the run happen. So keep up with those donations for Animorphs. <clears throat> we all need to watch how bad that run is. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> all right. So we're going to load the Japanese 1.0. And we're going to be doing some more SRM, which is the huge glitch that was found recently. Um, you saw us doing, well, you saw ZFG doing it in Deku Tree. Um, so I'm just going to load a save state um, outside Grand City. Uh, so I'm going to import a macro real quick, because another feature of, of uh, Practice ROM, a really nice feature, is that uh, we can play back some inputs. You might be familiar with a TAS. Um, you can play back inputs, and it's... So I'm just going to get the this pre-recorded sequence of inputs where I just set up a few things. Um, I'm not playing, I'm not touching the controller. This is all stuff I recorded earlier just to get the setup. Um, and so earlier we did SRM with the boomerang, where you use a boomerang to pick something up, and then you unload it and load something else there. Uh, this time, we're going to use a pot, where we're going to get linked to pick up a pot, unload the pot, and make something else. Uh, load in memory where the pot was, so that now Link's hands are holding the thing that is now not a pot, uh, not writing position data to a pot, but they're writing position data to something else. Um, so here we go, he's holding this pot, which actually then unloaded when I went to the next room. I'm going to wander around a bit like we did earlier with going up to the compass room for seemingly no reason. I'm going to go up to one of the rooms at uh, the top of Goron City. Again, just to shuffle the memory around in the way we need it to. We need to get certain things to load and then unload to make sure everything ends up in the right position in memory so that the thing we want to be uh, in memory where the pot used to be uh, is all correct and, and uh, as it should be. So we're going to enter this room, leave it again. 
um, and need a specific angle because actually this time we're not writing position data, we're going to write angle data. Um, sorry, just typing something in on my laptop. Okay, so it's almost over, ready for the next phase. What could this be doing? What could I possibly be writing to? I'm writing some data somewhere, and it's going to happen in this next room with Darunia. There you go, that's the setup. And now I'm going to press Enter on my laptop, which is, going to, which is actually connected to the controller ports of the N64. So my laptop's going to send something down the controller ports of my N64, and we'll see in a minute what that does. Oh, and the game's frozen. But don't worry, that's, I was expecting this. This is supposed to happen. Just sit tight for about 10, 15 seconds. So the magic's happening right now as we speak. So uh, during my run, I got a lot of you know, interesting items on the B button. So you may want to pay attention to the B button coming up. Some interesting stuff's going to happen there. And uh, just going to master his text. Uh, he's telling me all about, I don't know. I don't even know what this text is, to be honest. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, <laughs> This is, is, a, is a, there's something on my B button. That, this is Franker B. Um, and just a reminder, this is just a Nintendo 64 console, completely just, you know, regular Nintendo 64, nothing special, no emulators. Um, this is a modded version, but it is not required for this. This can be done on a regular N64. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Been done, yeah. Um, so, shall I try it out? Uh, yeah, what happens when you press B? Let's try it. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> Try it again. Do it again. All right. Oh. Oh. Don't crash the game. Huh? So don't crash the game. No, I, okay. it takes more than that. <laughs> oh, uh, you, you gonna pause? Uh, sure. Why not? Hey, what's oh, that? Look. I got a dog on my C. You got you got zero though. It's all right. <laughs> Still use them. Um, so we should maybe explain a little bit what happened here. Um, what you just saw was, the f was an example of the first time we have what people call ACE, or arbitrary code execution on Ocarina of Time. Um, specifically, this is a payload that was written by Glank, who also made this uh, ROM. And it's a very complicated way to, we use the SRM glitch to redirect uh, where the game is looking at and executing code. So what I actually wrote to when I did this glitch was... Do you want to spawn some dogs while I'm talking? Uh, I don't know how to use N64. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> wait, wait, I, can, I guess I can switch the... Switch no, 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 don't, don't, Yeah, don't, okay, don't. okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so what we did in, in Deku was write some data to the chest to make the va um, variable that changes the chest contents to be something different. What I did here is I wrote some data to some code in Darunia's code, you know, the code that runs when you speak to him with something in your hand. And it's a very complicated setup, and I can't explain all of it now, yeah. but the idea is we managed to get the code that normally runs when you talk to Doronia to do something else instead, and we get it to jump to all this data that we set up earlier, which is actually interpreted as code by the game. And eventually, we, through all of that, we managed to get it to uh, go into a sort of mode where it starts reading controller inputs. So that's why it was frozen for a a while there. My, my laptop was sending a bunch of you know, regular analog stick and button press inputs into the N64, and our little setup there was able to convert that into code, which uh, part of that was to draw the Frank uh, uh, Z uh, icon on B. Um, and uh, You want to show what, what the code actually was? Sure. So um, I guess I'll import that one. Um, so the way, I mean, it requires a few things. One of them is the uh, file name, which we give a specific name, and it's interpreted as code, and it jumps, that code jumps somewhere else and jumps somewhere else, and eventually it gets to the Scarecrow song, which we play in a very specific way, um, which I'm going to demo to you at the moment, uh, just right now, uh, P1. Um, so I'm, it's, it's playing a song through the uh, N64 controller one, and you can see at the bottom 
there's like a little input display. It says 0, 9. That's analog stick position. That's just switched to 13. Um, and this is essentially just like a 15-minute song that we're playing to this guy. <laughs> and it's, it's, it doesn't sound nice. And it's... Uh, I mean, he's jamming, but it doesn't yeah. sound nice, and it's, it doesn't do anything else in game. But this data, this so it's so rich. You can press buttons, you can pitch bend the note, and he remembers all of it. So it, that data that we surf in memory, we can then jump to and execute it as code and instructions. And that code and instructions is the thing that allows us to then start pulling uh, controller inputs and write that really efficiently and get Frank a Z. Uh, so I'm not going to show all of this because, this, I, like I said, it's 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> um, we don't need. We don't have time for that. So uh, one more thing I'm going to show, just because I can. Um, and uh, I guess we'll end on this note. Um, although I might have a few more shout-outs afterwards, but for the glitch wait, exhibition. Wait, no, no, do the thing. Do the thing. Okay, fine. All right. So I actually think I already dropped some down here earlier. Oh, we actually found a new glitch literally about an hour ago. Yeah. With this. Oh, oh yeah. Never mind. Okay. But, uh, well, yeah. There's, there's, there's a dog under there. there. Um, <laughs> just chilling. I put those down there earlier. Um, they can breathe. Don't worry. Yeah. I'll end the glitch, glitch exhibition on this. I uh, might have a few shout-outs afterwards. But as for the glitch exhibition, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, sure thing. So right. obviously this is huge. Uh, N64 Ace um, has never really been done on Ocarina of Time before. So huge shout-outs to Glank for making this all possible. Um, the task that I'm using was made by my best friend, Roggy, who's just like amazing at this stuff. Um, just like, huge shout-outs to like, Fig and Natalia and Thara and Mr. Cheese and a bunch of other people. Um, and just like thanks to everyone in the OT community. Everyone wave, come on. I mean, you guys are great. Um, and I'll maybe let you... Yeah. All right, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, this was pretty cool. And yeah, I think that's it. <laughs>